but a voice like mine, I probably don't need it, but there we are. <laughs> Welcome to the service of Holy Communion. Welcome everyone. And also a welcome to those who are watching at a distance. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. Anybody who is a full member of any church, from the Ethiopian Orthodox to the Pentecostal, you're welcome here. If you're a full member, come and join us for communion. If you're not, or if for any reason you don't take, want to take communion, just come up and hold your hands down and we will offer you a blessing. But please come. And if there's anybody who hasn't been here before, you are welcome. Stop and talk to us afterwards. We'd like to know about you. Well, it's been a difficult week. It's been a hard week. Hurricane in the US killing more people than any hurricane has done for years. Worst devastation that Carolinas have ever seen. Floods in China. In the Middle East, the Middle East is on fire. Flames everywhere. In Sudan, the fighting still goes on and people are dying of hunger and starvation because they can't get food. And in Ukraine, people are being killed as people are fighting to gain a few feet, a few meters of land. And in Africa, Central Africa, MPOX is raging and out of control. What a world. But the psalmist tells us, focus on God. Turn your eyes upon God. Look up from the mess of the world to the Lord. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And it concludes, The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth, forevermore. We pray. Lord, we pray this morning that we may look up as the psalmist looked up to the hills, that we may focus on you as he turned his focus on you, and that we may see and hear and accept your goodness into every aspect of our own lives. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now, to start the service, we stand and sing two songs. The first one is very well known to most of us. Now is the time for worship. And the second one, Holy Forever, some, most people know, some don't. But it's a relatively good thing to sing. And as someone who was getting old and beginning to go a little deaf, I want to hear you. Please sing. So let us stand and sing. music. <laughs> I'm not used to doing AB. <laughs> okay, it's on. We'll turn it up. Now that it's on.
I said at the beginning, the world looks pretty messy. And often we look at ourselves, we think, what a mess. Which of us hasn't made a bit of a mess of our lives in this last week? One way or another, said things we didn't mean to say. Forgot to say what we should say. Treated people in a way we shouldn't have treated them. Forgot to treat them as we should. It's right then to come to confession. To bring these things before God. So that God may say to us, the world may not forgive you, but I forgive you. So let us say together the, the confession which is on the screen. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us spend a few moments knowing, drawing into ourselves that forgiveness, that cleansing, that wiping away of all that has gone wrong so that we start afresh. Today is the 19th Sunday after Trinity, and this is the collect or special prayer for the day. O oh God, for as much as without Thee we are not able to please Thee, mercifully grant that Thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, Thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now stand for the Holy Gospel. The readings will be read to us this morning by Natasha. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark and Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. A dead girl and a sick woman. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers, named Jairus, came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 
She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touched his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And <laughs> they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Teleus comb, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up, walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave them strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, be and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thanks, Jesus. Thanks be to God. now come and speak to us. That's what we might come first. Yeah. Good morning. How are you doing? 
If you haven't already guessed, this morning's whole service is about focus. Focusing on the one true God, that is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth are your words. I pray that you give us minds to understand, ears to hear, and hearts to focus on you. Amen. Here I am. Here I am is the six ways the prominent men of the Bible stepped in faith and they made themselves available to God. They were Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Samuel, Isaiah, and Ananias. Abraham, in Genesis 22, 1-2, some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, Here I am. And God said, Take your son, your only son, and whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moira and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will show you. That's focus. Jacob, Genesis 31 to 11. The angel of the Lord said to him in a dream, Jacob, and he answered, Here I am. In Genesis 46, 2, And God spoke to Israel, who was Jacob, in a vision by night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And Jacob replied, Here I am. And Moses, Exodus 3 to 4, Sorry, 3, verse 4. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said to him, Here I am. Samuel, in 1 Samuel, there was a boy who named Samuel, and he heard the Lord calling three times. And three times, thinking it was Eli, he said, here I am. Before Eli, Eli realised that God is speaking to him. So the next time that God speaks, he says, your servant is listening. Isaiah, Isaiah 6, verse 8. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go before us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Ananias, Acts 9, verse 10. There was a disciple in Damascus called Adonias, and the Lord had him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And I'm sure there are many more that say, here I am, use me. And there's one in particular, and this one's a woman, and I'm sure there are many women in the Bible that do that very thing, if it's not recorded. And this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Although she didn't say, here I am, she did declare, I am the Lord's servant, which to me is good enough. So where and what is your focus? We've already been told that there are many things going on in this world that can distract us from God. But we need to keep focused. Those distractions will take us away from God. That's not, we shouldn't pray for them. We shouldn't care for them. We shouldn't acknowledge that these things are happening. But if we're not careful, they will take our focus off of God. Now, I hope this works. So, who here watched the program called Catchphrase? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And when the thousand pound thing comes up, you've got all these squares, and you, a square comes up, and you've got to guess what it is. But it's not often that they get it right the first time, second time, third time, or fourth time. It's not until more squares are revealed that you actually see what it is. 
Can you tell me what this is? Any ideas? No? Hey, very good, isn't he? And then even more, and even more, and even more, and even more, <laughs> even more. And then finally, we get there. Because things are always better when they're in focus. And we can do God's will when we're focusing on him. And he's focusing on us. Now we heard from the gospel reading, which you might think is a bit weird. It was Mark 5, 21 to 43. There are several things happening in this reading. First of all, you have Jairus. His daughter is dying. What does he do? He comes before Jesus. Probably hasn't even met Jesus before, but he's heard about him. And he gets on his knees. The gospel says he gets on his knees and pleads with him. Where's his focus? Totally on Jesus. But Jesus' focus at that time is totally on Jairus. Because we we know from the story that there are many, many people, loads and loads of people thronging around him. But Jesus' focus is on Jairus, and Jairus' focus is just on Jesus. We know before even Jesus gets up and goes to rescue the girl, there is another woman in the story. And this woman would have been classed as unclean. She would have been taking a risk even being among those people. She could have been stoned, killed, at the very least thrown out because she was an outcast. But you see, her focus was just on Jesus All she needed to do was get close to Jesus and touch his gown. Her focus was totally on Jesus, regardless of what was going on around her and what might happen to her. Her focus was just on Jesus. At that point, Jesus says, who's touched me? And the disciples say, well, everybody's touched you. There's loads of people here. He said, no, someone in particular has touched me. And then he turns to the girl. And Jesus' focus is just on that girl. Doesn't matter what's going on around him, all these people around him. Jesus' focus is on that one person, that girl, in whom he cleanses and sends away, completely clean. There are several people in the Bible that have had that instance of focus. One of them is Matthew. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, he says. And Matthew got up and followed him. You see, Jesus' focus was just on Matthew. Regardless of what was going around, Jesus' focus was just on that one person because he meant so much to him. Now it says in Luke's Gospel that Levi, who was Matthew, got up and left everything and followed him. So where do you think Matthew's focus was at that point? It was a tax collector. He had a load of figures in front of him. His focus was just on Jesus. And it empowered him to get up, drop everything, leave everything and follow Jesus. Most of us know the story of Zacchaeus. That little person, very similar to me, who to, who to see Jesus had to climb a tree. But it's extraordinary. What we don't see is that focus of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus would climb a tree to see this man that everybody's been talking about. His focus was just on seeing Jesus to climb a tree and do that. And then the story carries on, of course, where Jesus comes along And he looks at Zacchaeus and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm eating with you tonight. There are loads of people around, but Jesus' focus is just on Zacchaeus. No one else. But we need to be careful that we don't lose that focus. We heard the story this morning in Matthew of Jesus walking on water. 
And Peter says, let me come out. Let me walk on water too. And he says, well, come on then. And Peter gets out the boat and he is walking on water until he focuses on the waves around him and he starts to sink. See, at first, his focus was just on Jesus. Jesus says, come, get on the water. And he does it. But as soon as he loses focus, he starts sinking. But the good news is, he calls out and Jesus' focus is just on Peter as he pulls him out of the water. But we hear more about Jesus, uh, sorry, Peter in the stories later on, where Peter denies Jesus three times the night before he dies. That is losing focus big time. So when you lose focus, things happen. Things don't seem as they should. So we need to be careful we don't lose focus. And there's another person that we all know, and that's Jonah. Talk about someone losing focus. He's called by God to do something important, to save Nineveh. But he goes the opposite direction. Because he's not focused on God's will. He's not focused on what God wants from him. But God is focused on him because God is calling him. He's not calling anyone else. He's calling Jonah to do the work for him. It's interesting in this picture that Jesus is out of focus, but the lamb is in focus. And which way is the lamb facing? He's facing away from Jesus. You see, we only get lost when we're not focusing on God, Jesus, the Spirit. When we're not focusing on him, we lose our way. When we're facing in the opposite direction, we get lost. But lucky there is a God who focuses on us and is coming for us. Now we know we use many things to focus on things. We use binoculars, telescopes, to bring things closer so we can see them. We use microscopes to focus on something that is so small our human eye cannot see. We use glasses so we can see better. We also have the Bible. You see, this Bible helps us to focus on the God, the one true God. Reading this will help us refocus on him. And of course, prayer. We pray, don't we? We pray that we will refocus on God's will and bring to God those that also need His focus. So we need to keep our focus on God. That is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God asks us in this book to stay focused. And we should remain focused. Up here we have a cross. But there is a slight problem there because if we focus just on the cross and don't focus on what happened on the cross, then it's all in vain. The cross is important, but it's actually what happened on the cross that is important. The cross is empty because Jesus is risen. He's no longer on the cross. But we shouldn't forget what happened on the cross. Yes, the cross is important, but don't focus just on the cross. Focus on what Jesus gave us. Because Jesus' focus on the cross was on us. When Jesus died on that cross, his focus was not on his pain, was not on what was going on around him. His focus was on saving us. His focus was totally on us. You see, God focuses on us all the time. You've only got to read this Bible where many people stop focusing and things go wrong. The Israelites many, many times stopped focusing on God and it didn't go well for them. But God still kept focus on them. God still loved them. God still loves us, whether we lose focus or not. But he wants us to stay focused on him.
So God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit says to us, here I am, use me. God says to us, here I am, use me. Use me as your Father that loves you. Use me as Jesus Christ that saved you. Use me as the Holy Spirit that lives within you. Here I am. Use me. And it's so powerful that love. In this Bible, it's like, well, it is. It's a love story. There are people in this Bible that fall away. But God is still there, focusing on them. God's love is all the way through this Bible. But the Bible is also full of human beings hurting, falling away, trying, failing. But God is still there, loving them. And through Jesus Christ, we have that promise that we will be with him one day for those that focus on him. And to remind you of his love. It plays. <laughs> Is it going to play? Let me try. If it doesn't play, it doesn't matter. But, uh, is it going to work or not? I'm clicking on it. It's not. Oh, doing we've got anything. sound. All right. Try it again. There's no. There's no pictures there. No, the no words you are about to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them. For they come from the very heart of God. He loves you. And he is the father you have been looking for all your life. This is his love life. Misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. For I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you. For you are my treasured possession. 
I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything that I loved that I might gain. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you will receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? Kevin, talk to us about focus. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it very difficult to focus. But one thing which does help us focus is to remember and recall and repeat what we believe. And so let us stand now and say the Apostles' Creed together. and focus on the Lord God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please sit. Margaret is now coming to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today confident in the greatness of your love and power. We lift our hearts in prayer and praise to you. In the silence that follows, prompt us to set aside the concerns that have occupied our thoughts over the last week. Let us lift them to you knowing that you can help us deal with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring you our thanks and praise for the beauty of your creation. Show us how we can contribute to safeguarding your world so that our children and future generations can thrive in their environment. Inspire the scientists and others working to combat the damage we have done to our climate so that some of that damage can be reversed. Lord, let the people of Tuvalu, who provi be, be provided with the answers and resources they need to save their island country and its population from the threat of rising sea levels. Faithful God, we pray for all those who provide our daily needs, for those working on the land, those delivering foodstuffs and those working in our local markets and shops. We especially remember those who are struggling with the problems generated by the unpredictable climate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we pray for the people of Palestine, Israel, Lebanon and Iran as the prospect of outright war in the Middle East seems increasingly possible. We pray for a, peace, a ceasefire, Lord. May those amongst the international communities working to achieve progress through diplomacy never give up. Heavenly Father, bring some relief for all the innocent victims, the hostages, refugees, and the many who have been displaced. Intervene with the political leaders in the region that they may have the courage and the will to end war and seek peace. Lord, as you know, in Central Africa, war continues to rage. In Sudan, the civil war has resulted in at least 20,000 deaths. Many more have been injured. And many, even many more, even more have been, have had to flee their country. We pray for an end to the fighting, to allow humanitarian aid and supply to be available to those who desperately need it. For the people of Ukraine and Russia, Lord, we pray that there might, might be a willingness on both sides to enter talks so that people can begin to hope for an end to the devastation there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the cost of living crisis here has been a has a, had a brutal impact on those already struggling to afford essentials like food, clothing and heating. Many can't afford 
basic toiletries like soap, toothpaste, etc. An increasing number of families are being pushed over a financial cliff. We pray that those experiencing poverty and debt are able to access the support they need, whether that's help with debt, housing, accessing any in extra income entitlement, or finding employment that covers their living costs. Lord, surround them with your love. Protect their mental and physical health and bring them hope that they might find a way forward. Help us as individuals and as a church to always be ready to offer what support we can to anyone in difficulty at this time, even though it often feels it's not enough. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father God, with all that is going on in our world, it is easy to feel overwhelmed. We believe in the power of prayer and that you, Lord, will hear and answer prayers. Remind us, Lord, of Christ's word to his disciples and to others in Mark chapter 9, verses, verse 23, in which he said, Why do you say, if I can? All things are possible for anyone who believes. Father, help us to reflect on what the Lord's message should mean for us. Jesus was asserting that if we move forward in faith, all things are possible. Father, you know that often we are reluctant to move away from our routines. We feel safe in the places and with the people whom we know. We like to be in control. When you prompt us, either through your spirit working in us or through others asking us to move away from what we know, let us be willing to step forward in faith with you. Let us be ready to act in ways that may initially seem risky to us and to trust that your power and your love will be sufficient for us in any new venture. We ask all these prayers in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. And as we prepare for communion, let us greet each other in the name of the Lord. For as we heard in that clip on the screen, the Lord has known us since we were in our mother's womb. We're all different, and yet we're all God's people. So let us greet each other and share God's peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. Greeting. Greetings. Reading your name. So this is you. This is you. you this is Peace with Auntie Jenny from Zimbabwe. Hello, Auntie Jenny from Zimbabwe. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you. 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 And I am doing the Friday service, so it will be done. Yeah. Yeah, no. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also I shall remind you. Peace of the Lord be with you. You're running away. I've got to babysit. Okay, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace with you.
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we give you this in remembrance of me, his blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive them who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come, not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come, because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come, because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Just a word about our communion. There's still concerns around about COVID and flu at this time of year. So we're going to split the platform in two. We can dunk the bread, dip the bread into the wine and give you them both around here. Or we can give it to you in the traditional form, the bread and the wine separately around here. I hope that's clear to you, <laughs> and especially to any visitors, we are a rather strange way of doing it, but uh, we, we'll give it to you both <laughs> here or separately <clears throat> there. Could I have my helpers, please?
We've been reminded this morning about keeping our focus on the Lord. And it's good as we say together the final prayer. It's just one of thanksgiving, but it's also one of commitment that we do indeed focus on the Lord as we love and serve him in this coming week. So we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the notices, thank you. I notice the rising excitement as we come to the notices. <laughs> the enthusiasm. First thing is will be prayer after the service. For anybody who wants prayer for any purpose at all, come and join us for prayer. If not, I think there is coffee outside. And come and join us for coffee. Come and join us anyway. First notice... The church will be open on Wednesday 9th of October to mark Baby Loss Awareness Week. It will be open from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. so that people can light a candle, write a name, or just sit and reflect. In the notice sheet, which some of you have seen on the internet, it says that the early evening service is cancelled this Friday. It isn't. There will be a service of preparation for the evening this Friday at half past four. I've been asked to announce the St. Simon's Mystery Trail on Saturday the 12th of October, that's the coming Saturday, at 1.30pm. An all-age mystery walk around South Sea starting from the church and finishing up at a coffee shop. <laughs> oh, well, a lot to choose from. <laughs> a flat route, and depending on age and ability, will take between half an hour and an hour. It's suitable for wheelchairs and mobility scooters and prams and buggies, and you'll receive instructions on the day. You do this in small groups or on your own, if preferred. You can start the walk, really, from 1.30 onwards, so the groups can be staggered. There is no charge for this. Remember, no charge. Just a bit of church family fun. No need to sign up for it. Just turn up on the day, rain or shine. But if it is really wet, and we all know it can be really wet, we may make a last-minute decision to rearrange it to another Saturday. Our harvest celebration is on the 20th of October. All-age celebration including a bring and share lunch, so two weeks today. We see the lunch as an integral part of our celebration and hope everyone will stay on and eat together. It's particularly important this year as our prayers are being answered and we are growing in number. Jackie is very keen that we should use this opportunity to begin to get to know each other better. And for her Harvest Festival, if you are able, underlined, if you are able, please bring something to add to the lunch table, cold dishes, but no nuts, please, because some people have a nut allergy, and something to add to our harvest collection, which will be shared with our friends at Sunday suppers. Christmas angels. If you're already knitting or crocheting Christmas angels, please let Andrea know after the service how many you aim to produce. And if you want to know more, see Andrea. A card for Jack. As Jackie explained last week, Jack is going on to be increasing his youth work within the community and is no longer able to join us on Sunday mornings. Our young people will be able to continue going to the various youth groups, including High Tide, and Kevin has currently stepped up to coordinate the Sunday morning youth work. And Jackie is sorting out a team of volunteers to support him in that. Next week will be Jack's last week. And outside, there is a card. Well, actually, it's at the back and it's being waved up and down at me. 
There's a card to sign there. On the 30th of November, please put it in your diaries. Remember, it's our away day when we get together and think and enjoy each other's company and do a number of odd things in Shed Field out there in the Mian Valley. Put it in the diaries, 30th of November. Now, Paul has something which he wishes to say to us. Um, just uh, another plug for the exhibition. For those of you who don't know, on the, on the 19th of October, we're launching an exhibition of paintings by a Sheffield artist called Stephen Martin. Um, Stephen is a guy who's been living in poverty for many years and has painted some pictures of himself and other people who he knows in the Sheffield area who are also living in poverty. And of course it's about their condition, but it's also about their aspirations, their hopes. And alongside that, we hope to have some pictures of some of our friends from Sunday suppers, um, saying a little bit about who they are and, and their hopes and aspirations. We're launching that at 7.30 on the 19th. The first thing is to say, it would be great to see as many people as possible. Um, here and then during the week from the 21st the Monday to the 25th the Friday the church will be open from 11 o'clock till 6 in the evening to show the exhibition and we hope lots of people will come but I need lots of things from you not, ju not just about coming and looking at the exhibition we need lots of volunteers there will be all sorts of important people coming on the 19th like the deputy mayor and the deputy lady mayoress councillors who are coming and speaking, um, people from other organisations. So we need people to welcome, we need people to be in the car park, we need people to do food. There's sign-up sheets out there, I've left them and I hope they're clear, if they're not, please tell me. If you are available at any of the slots, please do sign up uh, because it's going to be very difficult to run this event. And I think it is a great opportunity for us as a church to bring this issue of poverty really highlight that in our community to a wider audience. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. I have reason to believe that one of the councillors for St Jude Ward will be there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let us see, stand and sing our last hymn, which is actually my favourite hymn. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Let's stand and sing. my vision, O Lord of my
We are here. Use us. You are our God. We will use you. Father, send us out to our communities, to our friends, to those maybe we don't know yet, to send your gospel in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.